Sorry, Cab. It's, uh, my name is Kun Andrew. I'm director of golf at uh, Pro Tour Golf College Thailand. And this is the second of our series of seminars regarding um, Pro Tour Golf College and how we train. Last time we looked at the overview of what the philosophy and what Pro Tour Golf College was all about. Today we're going to look a little bit more deeply into um, deliberate practice. What is deliberate practice and how is it going to affect our game? Okay. As always, we start with the, what, do you, what do you want to achieve? What, what's your dream? And last, last week we looked at uh, the Open Championship. This week it's the Evian Masters in the ladies, the third of the um, major tournaments for the ladies. Deliberate practice. What is deliberate practice and why is it so important? What we're talking about with deliberate practice is, is first of all you've got to define your weaknesses. And that's where we looked at last week when we were talking about understanding your game, recording your results, so that you understand where your game is, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. That's how you're going to improve your scores. You must know your strengths because that's what you need to be playing to at the moment when you make your course plan and how you go out on the golf course. But you've got to know what your weaknesses are in direct relation to the, the outcome of the result and how that's affecting your scores. Once you've defined your weaknesses and you understand what it is that you've got to prove, uh, uh, what you've got to improve on, you need to design your practice. You've got to create a plan of practice to strengthen the skills that you're not very good at at the moment. What a lot of people and players like to do is, that when they've got a strength, they like to practice that strength. If they've got a shot they're not particularly strong out or good at, they tend to steer away from practicing that shot. And that's the exact opposite of what we need to do. We need to be out there practicing and finding a way to improve those areas that we're not strong in. So you've got to know what your weaknesses are and then you've got to have an exact plan of how you're going to correct that. All the plans, they need to be very specific, so you need to know exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to go about it and it needs to be really measurable so that you can make sure that you monitor and that you improve that skill and that it's definitely happening. An example of this might be, if you were to practice the lob shot, you wasn't very good at the lob shot, okay? You need to make sure that you're very specific that today I'm going to go out, I'm going to work on my technique because I need to get a better technique to play the lob shot. Okay? How am I going to measure that? Well, I'm going to do it when I feel more comfortable and confident that I can play a lob shot, okay, then that's measurable that I can play, that I'm, I've improved in that area. The next might be that you need to improve the control, your distance control with that lob shot now that you've got good technique. So now you can put a target, you can have a six foot ring around that target and you can measure how many balls you can now get inside that six foot ring out of ten, in groups of ten. Okay? So this is a specific and deliberate way to go out and improve your lob shot, it's measurable and you're going to get feedback with it. You've got to devote some time, and I'm going to explain a little bit more on this in, in a moment in the second part of the, the seminar here today, but you've got to commit to what you're doing. You know, you've got to devote the time to it. If you want to improve that skill, you've got to make sure that you're going to go out and do that. And you've got to discuss the results. Okay? You've got to monitor the outcome and get critical, critical feedback. Once a series of practice is done, you've got to continually monitor what it is that you're doing to ensure that you're having a desired effect. It's actually going to improve your golf game and improve your, most importantly, improve your score. Because if it's not improving your score, then it's not deliberate, it's not making the, achieve, the designated achievement. You know, you have to have somebody, a coach, a family friend, who can give you that critical feedback, who can be aware of what you're doing, monitor what you're doing, and, and get that feedback into where you are.
So here we have the deliberate practice model. This is not something new or actually even designed by Pro2 Golf College. You know, this is a scientific proven method through 25, 30 years plus of research on how the best people in their fields, musicians, sportsmen, business people, have actually got to the top. Okay? And two, three hours of deliberate practice is proved to improve performance in any of those areas much better than six hours of just general practice that's not highly deliberate. Okay? So where we're looking at in this deliberate goal practice model, define, design, devote, discuss, we go back to the define. Devote time to what you're doing. And this is really central to what most people need to get a hold of when they're looking at the serious about wanting to be on tour. And that's your priorities and your accountability to your priorities. What do you really want to do and how will you measure it? The first question is, what really matters to you? As a professional golfer, what is really important in your life? And understand the order of how things need to be in your life if they're the most important. You've got to prioritise. We all have many aspects to our life and that's great. We don't want to just have golf. Okay, but we've got to understand what is important. And for me, if you're serious about succeeding on tour, your golf practice needs to come just behind your and your family's health. Okay? Nothing else should that be there to interrupt your practice schedule. Now, not I said your family and your health. Not you and your family. Okay? Your family's health. Things like that. That comes first, I agree. But behind that must be your dedication to your practice. And nothing, no phone calls or invitations to go out and do fun things with your friends should interrupt your golf practice. Okay? There may be occasions, maybe you've got sponsors and you have to take care of the sponsors. We know the financial implications of that. But really, that's where you've got to prioritise and make sure that's your number one. So second to that, to help that with your families and stuff like that, you've got to make sure that everybody is pulling in one direction. You need to discuss this with the people closest to you. Your girlfriends, your husbands, your wives, your boyfriends, your family, your mums and dads, your sisters and your close friends. Everybody needs to understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. They also need to understand how difficult it is to achieve that and why you need to prioritise and make sure that golf comes first so that they don't expect you to drop things at the drop of a hat to just come out with them or, or go and, and, and do menial things that, that aren't really that urgent. Okay? If you let those people around you know about your schedule first, you know, there's plenty of time in the day. If your practice is deliberate enough, there's plenty of time to carry on doing things with others and going out with your friends and, and spending time with the family. Okay. But you've got to get it in the right order. Finally, on this is you need to be accountable. Okay, you've got to find somebody you, you're accountable to or a group. As individuals, as human beings, one of the things that we're not very good at is being accountable to ourselves. Okay, if if the only person who's going to tell you off or who's going to monitor how well you do things is yourself, the chances are you'll let things slide quite easily. It's just human nature. Okay? We're not very good at being that disciplined with ourselves individually. An example of this was myself recently. You know, I, I want to get my Thai language up to, to the next level. Uh, and I took some Thai lessons, and I noticed after about four or five lessons that I wasn't really improving. I was learning stuff in the lesson, but I wasn't really improving. Because outside of that one hour lesson, I wasn't practicing. I wasn't really working at the things that I was being set to do. Because my life has so many other things going on, I just let those things take over. So I actually moved house recently. And what that meant was that within the school I was going to, I transferred to a new school and I got a new teacher. Now, understanding the, the need to be accountable, the first thing I said to that new teacher was, look, if we're going to do this, I need you to set me some homework 
something that I'm accountable to you for at the end of each session, and then you must test that, um, test me on that, the very first thing of the next lesson. Okay? By doing that, it made me accountable. I didn't want to go into the next lesson having not practiced, not being able to pass whatever test she was going to set me. Okay? So it made me practice. I became accountable, and then the lessons became worthwhile. And you need to do that within your golf. You need to find somebody who you're accountable to. Somebody who you've literally got to report to at the end of each day to let them know what you did. And more importantly, what you learned and what you improved for on that day. So, so it's really important that we find to be accountable. Obviously, of course, you come to us at Pro 2 Golf College, that's what we're there for. We're monitoring you, practice you there six hours a day. We have strict rules, not because we want to be school teachers, but because we know you need to be accountable for what you're doing. You've got to have that discipline because that's what golf is all about. So, just to wrap up today's schedule, or today's seminar, same as last week, final thoughts here, you know, we, we're carrying on at the, at the next couple of tournaments, we're here, next week I'll be doing a seminar and we'll be looking at periodization training and how that can affect your, your planning and, and your performance, okay, following on from that we have the camps, uh, the dates are still yet to be confirmed, by Sina and their venues, but we'll get back to you really shortly on that and let you know when they are. And Pro 2 Golf College starts on the 8th of October, so if you're watching this uh, on video, and for those of you who are here now, get in touch with us shortly. The, the, the places will be very limited, so get your name down as soon as possible. Um, thank you very much. See you next week.